So yeah, this presentation is a little bit the intersection between performance and ergonomics. Uh, it's kind of where uh, we, we've got to do something that maybe we don't love to do for ergonomics for performance. Um, so again, I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of background here, and then we'll dive into changes in ZO 2.0. So following up on our earlier discussion about the scheduler, one further complication that we have to deal with is blocking work. So when we have a setup like this with a functional effect system and we're using a limited number of threads to run the work associated with our application, we need to be really careful about pushing blocking work onto that core thread pool. Because if we only have four or eight threads here, and one of those threads is now doing some work that's blocking where it's just like sitting there waiting for a file handle to be available, that's taking out essentially 25% maybe of the processing capacity of our application. And of course, if we have a bunch of those, if we try to open 10 files and now all of our threads are blocking on opening these files, we no longer have any of these threads available to look at work in other fibers that may be supposed to be interrupting this work or doing other higher level control in our application. So to address that, we need to push that work onto a separate blocking thread pool. And that was a feature that Zio actually pioneered in Zio 1.0 with the blocking service that was later incorporated in the CATS ecosystem originally in the linebacker project and then brought in in CATS 2.0 in this blocker thing that you had to kind of pass around everywhere and then more natively supported in uh, Cats Effect 3.0. But because we've been doing this for all this time with Zio, we've also learned things about how to do that. And we've figured out some things to be able to do that better in Zio 2.0. So to address that, I wanna show you a, a couple of benchmarks here. So, here we're just going to benchmark the efficiency of this blocking operation. And we're going to start by looking at a very granular blocking operation. So in, um, in, in Cats Effect 3.0, the model is that blocking should always be done at an extremely granular level, at the level of the individual side effect that you're importing into the effect system. So we're just going to take one of those and we're just going to repeat that a bunch of times. And we're going to do the exact same thing with Zio with its blocking constructor. And this one actually has to do a little bit more work because it is calling blocking on an effect. So we got to evaluate this effect as well, even though it's unit, but we won't worry about that. So we might think these two should be the same. Well, <laughs> not so much. The Zio operator is dramatically faster. And so you might say, well, Adam, like what kind of trickery are you pulling on a skier? Those operations looked exactly the same and they looked very low level. How can the performance possibly be that different between the two of them? And we start to get the answer to that when we look at what's actually going on here. So let's just say we've got five blocking tasks that we wanna do. So this like granular way of doing blocking is saying, well, okay, we're about to do the first blocking task. So let's shift ourselves over the blocking pool. And then, okay, we're done with that task. So let's shift ourselves back to the main thread pool. And then, okay, now we're getting ready to do task B. Let's shift ourselves back over the blocking pool and let's shift ourselves back. And we have to do that for every effect we do. So here, if we've got five effects, we have to do a total of 12 different shifts between thread pools here. And these aren't free. So essentially, if we have n tasks, we're doing two n shifts just to execute these blocking tasks. In contrast, what we'd really like to do here is we'd like to say, well, before we do any of these blocking tasks, let's shift on to the blocking thread pool. And then let's just stay there for the entire time and do all of these tasks, potentially on the same thread on the blocking thread pool, 
And then when we're done with all the blocking tasks, let's shift back to the main thread pool. And that's something that uh, we've learned over the course of working on Zio 1.0. And you might say like, oh, well, this isn't actually gonna impact performance because the time these blocking tasks is gonna dominate the time you spend shifting thread pools. But in fact, in our users, we've seen that often in going from that extremely granular blocking to this more regional blocking, we see significant performance improvements. Um, so that's a, a pattern that we found works well in Zio 1.0. We're promoting more in Zio 2.0. And we've also made some improvements to the runtime system to facilitate this. So if we go back to the example from the previous page, you might say, well, hold on. In the Zio example, you were doing your same granular blocking. You were calling that blocking operator 10,000 times. Like, how is this more efficient? And the answer is that in Zio 2.0, in addition to having that concept of a lock operator, where you can say, I wanna make sure this thing runs on this thread pool and shift it to this thread pool. And as soon as you're done, shift it back to where you started. We also have a concept of run something, but, and it obviously has to be run somewhere, but I don't care where it's run. I just know it needs to be run somewhere. And so when you run a default effect, you're obviously running it somewhere, but you're not forcing it to be immediately shifted back there. And that gives the runtime more flexibility to, in this case, just continue running that task on the blocking thread pool. Now you still have that lock operator that has exactly the same semantics. So if you wanna make sure that that gets shifted back somewhere, you can always do that. But this works really well when you have these larger, um, sequences where often when you're doing one blocking thing, you're not just doing one blocking thing, you're doing a bunch of blocking things. And by doing them together, you can be a lot more efficient with it. Um, and one of the really nice things that layers on top of this is that particularly with Zio, it's easy to uh, do things at a more regional level instead. So we could take those same examples and now let's do the blocking instead of at the individual level of each individual effect, let's wrap it around the entire thing and designate this entire region as one that we wanna be run on the blocking executor. And then let's also try one more thing. Let's say that we were originally developing our application and as we were developing it, we did a bunch of individual things that were blocking and we said, okay, we wanna make sure we do the correct thing. So we marked each of them with the blocking constructor but then later on, after we developed this part of our application, we came back and looked at it and said, well, there's a lot of blocking stuff here. Why don't we just run the whole thing on the blocking executor? What would the performance of those two look like? Well, we see we get two more dramatic performance speedups here. So these first two are the ones we saw in the last slide. So we can think of if we're in the process of developing our application, okay, we did the fine grain thing. Then we realized that this whole area is actually blocking. So then we also put the blocking operator around it. That gives the runtime more knowledge that now it doesn't even have to check if it needs to shift back somewhere. So now it can be even more efficient. And then if we realize, okay, we wanna get even more efficiency, then we can take out those granular blocking operators and just use the regional one. And then we get even more performance out of that. So this regional blocking construct, we feel like is a better way to do blocking than this super granular construct. Obviously Zio supports both of them, but we're trying to um, support what we think is the best way to do it and provide tools that will naturally lead you to do that, even if you're not explicitly thinking about it and that very naturally supports you as you develop your application iteratively. Um, so uh, thank you very much.